Uh, what a joy to be with God's people, you know. Let's just pause in another moment and ask the Lord to speak to us. Lord, speak in the stillness while we wait on you. Hushed each heart to listen in expectancy. Speak, Lord. May no voice be heard, may no feeling be felt, may, may no blessing be received in these moments except what you give. We commit it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been focusing on the book of Isaiah, and uh, we just skimmed the surface, these four messages, but today we're going to be talking about all because of grace, all because of God's grace, all because of his love and his mercy and his grace, and we see that here in Isaiah 53. Have you ever wondered what happened to the baby Jesus? You know, at Christmas we focus on the infant child, or uh, well, last Sunday, the virgin birth. Well, he grew up, didn't he? <laughs> and he went to the cross. A baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. And uh, you really, the whole message of Christmas doesn't come to fruition until you get to the cross. Uh, we've learned so far that Jesus lights the way for those that are in, dar in darkness, Isaiah chapter 9. And then... Uh, we, we saw where Jesus is so unique. Uh, he's the wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Amen. And we learned that he came down last Sunday to, he came down to, to lift us up. He came down to lift us up. And, um, you know, Isaiah 53 is one of the most amazing chapters in all the Bible. If you haven't read it all the way through, let me challenge you uh, during this Christmas time to, to read it. It's, uh, this, this chapter, verses in chapter Isaiah 53, are quoted 41 times in the New Testament uh, for good reason. It was written 700 years, remember, 700 years before Christ was born, this was prophesied. Uh, these verses describe in great detail the life of Jesus. That's verses 1 through 4. I didn't read them, but if you'll read those first four verses, it talks about the life of, of the Messiah. And then uh, 5 through 8 that we're dealing with uh, this morning is the death of Christ. And then uh, verse 9 speaks of the burial of Christ. And then uh, verses 10 through 12, the exaltation of Christ. But we don't have time to get into all that. But summed up in one word, uh, it's, it's this word, the message today, substitution. <laughs> We talk about the substitutionary in theology, the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ. He, uh, but to put it in more plain in it, uh, English this morning, and this is what I want you to repeat with me two or three times during the message, at its core, uh, substitution means putting in place of another. So here's our phrase today. Here's the sermon today. I'm going to say because of grace, and you're going to say Jesus was born to die in my place. Let's practice that. Jesus was born to die in my place. Can we say that together? Jesus was born to die in my place. And then let's practice again. Because of God's grace, Jesus was born to die in my place. A little bit of po poetry there to help us remember it. Because of, God, because of grace, Jesus was born to die in my place. That's what these verses say. Uh, and through song and through scripture, we have celebrated the coming of Jesus at Christmas during these Sundays. And so I want us to focus now on, on the three, three reasons why Jesus came from heaven to earth to save us. But more specifically, notice with me first of all that he came to take our pain. Look at verse 4. Surely... And I can only think of this when I think of the Messiah, the, the singing of the Messiah. But surely, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. This means, this simply means that uh, an amazing truth about what's been given to us. Here it is. It says he has borne our griefs. Jesus has carried our griefs. He's carried our sorrows. Jesus came to carry our deep despair, our, our sufferings. And uh, the, the idea of, of lifting up and carrying away, that's what it's saying. Jesus came to take them and to, car 
carry that heavy load. That's why Jesus came down here on earth. Hebrews 2.18 speaks of that. Hebrews 2.18. It says that he, he carried our load. He carried our load. I'm reminded of the words uh, of that great uh, song that we like to sing. What a friend we have in Jesus. What? All our sins and grieves to bear. All of our sins. And Jesus came to carry them, to, to bear them away and to take them away. So Jesus came to take our pain. He came to take our pain. But secondly, notice here that, that Jesus came down from heaven to take our punishment. Look at verse 5. But he was wounded, what? For our transgressions. He didn't have any. He, Jesus was not wounded or or on the cross, we did not die on the cross for his own sins. He was wounded for our transgressions. Notice it says here, he was bruised for, for what? Our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. You see, Jesus was born in Bethlehem to bear our sor sorrows, but he also came to be our sin bearer, to carry our sin. To carry our sin. The body of Jesus was pierced when he hung on that cross and uh, with, with, with nails. And uh, really the better word there is not nails. Did you know that? We, we say it's actually spikes. Have, have you seen uh, the spikes that they that put down on the rail, rail? That's more like it. Uh, those, those spikes, those he, his hands and his feet were pierced. And later, you know, when they... Um, because he died so soon, usually, usually it took him 24 hours to die on the cross, but he died. And they came and they wanted to make sure, so what it was, they pierced his side with a spear. Jesus was, was hands and his feet were pierced, his, his side, that crown of thorns on his head. He, he went through that, notice it says, for what? Our transgressions. That's why Jesus died. That's why he was born. That's why he was born in Bethlehem. But he was born in order to, die, to, to bear our punishment, to take our punishment. He went through that for us. On top of that, it, he was crushed, there's the word here. He, he was crushed. Uh, that literally, that word there means he, he was pulverized. He was beaten down for our iniquities. That refers to our guilt. 1 Peter 2.24 says he bore our sins in his body on the tree. Jesus bore your sin and my sin on his, in his body on that tree. The punishment that you and I deserved was placed on Jesus so that we can experience the peace that the angels uh, uh, promised to the shepherds. Uh, look down at verse 10. We didn't read it. He said, yet it pleased the Lord. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, and he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. You see, Christmas, Christmas is important, but it, it must lead us to the cross. If, if Jesus wasn't born in Bethlehem, he couldn't have been crucified on Calvary. And so here's a side of the Christmas story that isn't often uh, told. Just think about it. Those little bitty soft hands of baby Jesus uh, fashioned by the Holy Spirit in the womb of his mother Mary were made so that one day nails, spikes, would be driven through them. This, this, those baby feet, those, those little pink uh, baby feet, uh, unable to walk, would one day stagger up a dusty hill and be nailed on a cross on Calvary. Just think about that. We think about the baby Jesus. Uh, that sweet little innocent, innocent infant head with sparkling eyes, eager mouth, was formed so that someday men might take a crown of thorns and force it down on top of it. 
that little bitty tender body, warm and soft, wrapped in swaddling clothes, would one day be ripped open by a spear in the side. We don't like to think about it at Christmas, but Jesus was born, folks, to die for you and for me to take our punishment. Think of the pain of the crucifixion. Uh, think of the suffocation. Uh, that's how they, 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 actually a person that was crucified was suffocated because of the weight. But notice what was on Jesus. It says he bore our sin. What weighed Jesus down? Your sin, my sin. That's, that's what, what caused him to die. And so when you consider Christmas this week, this Friday, remember that Jesus Christ came and was born in order to die for your sins and for mine. His substitutionary debt, debt on the cross fully satisfied God's righteous and holy wrath against you and me. Jesus took our pain and Jesus took our punishment in order that we could experience his peace. So are you ready? Because of grace, Jesus was born to die in, our play, in my place. So he came to take our pain, he take, came to take our uh, punishment, but then the real crux here is, is what I've been talking about. Jesus came to take our place. He took your place. Brother Larry, he took your place, he took my place. Ms. Dale, he took your place, and he took my place. And here, <laughs> this, uh, verse 6, All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Here we're compared to sheep, which, you know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not really a compliment, folks. <laughs> Did you know that? Sheep are some of the... Excuse me, but sheep are some of the dumbest animals, really. I mean, that's why they have to have a shepherd. Because you know, you know what sheep do, don't you? They, they, they're just interested in the next bite. <laughs> and, and they uh, graze, and they, they just, and they wander off. It says all, that's us. That's you and me, folks. We're, we're, we're just like sheep. We, we wander off. Notice that it says we all. <laughs> That's you and that's me. That's everybody. We, we all have gone astray. Everyone has turned his own. The Lord has laid on him the iniquities of what? Of all. Of us all. The interesting word there in that, though, is that word laid on. It, it actually, that word laid on is, is, it is a very, it, it means to cause, to strike with force. That's what it actually means. It doesn't mean just, <laughs> to, to, no, no, no. It's a word that means to be put to put down with great force, to punish with violence. <laughs> the strong arm of the Lord came down on Jesus, his only begotten son, with great force as he judged our sin on our Savior. The iniquity of us all fell on our substitute. He took our place. Substitution is a major theme throughout the scriptures. You know, uh, if you follow all the way through, uh, Brother David, right, right, right after Adam and Eve sinned, you remember in Genesis uh, 3, 21, uh, God, what did he do? He sacrificed an animal and covered their nakedness. They, they'd been covering themselves with leaves and then when they sinned and disobeyed, God killed an animal. And the Bible says in Genesis 3, 21, it says, Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. In order to get tunics of skin, you've got to kill the animal. And then, you know, God gave, God's, he gave the law. And uh, they continued to break the law. And to avoid punishment of breaking the law, what did God do? He, he gave them 
temporary substitutes to pay the price for their sins. And so what would happen when a, when a person in the Old Testament, uh, when they would sin, what would they do? They would, they would take an animal, a flawless animal, and that animal would die in the sinner's place so that the sinner could go free from the punishment. And of course, the most, beautiful, the most vivid picture is the Passover. You remember Exodus? Uh, the Passover portrayed how, how a substitute saved people from slaughter when the only way to avoid that death angel, that avenging angel, that was to have blood, the blood of a perfect male lamb applied on the doorpost of the home. If you remember the story there, God, God said in, in Exodus 12, 13, Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. I will pass over you. Hebrews 10, chapter 4 says that we have a problem, folks. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take it. That was temporary. Those Old Testament sacrifices, all that blood and all that... I mean, it had been rough today with all the animal rights folks. But anyway, <laughs> folks, that was temporary. The blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sin. That was just a picture. That was just a foreshadowing. The only acceptable offering is a perfect offering. And so Jesus was born in Bethlehem, God in human flesh. He was able to pay the perfect price for our sins through his substitutionary sacrifice. And what did John the Baptist say when he saw Jesus in John chapter 1 and verse 29? He looked at Jesus and what did he say? Behold, that means look, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The innocent was punished as if guilty so that the guilty might be rewarded as if innocent. You see, we, we truly deserve, don't we? We truly deserve the penalty and the punishment, but God has poured out his wrath against sin on his own son. And if you read, uh, I want to challenge you when, you when you go home this afternoon, if you have time, or sometime this week, to uh, open your Bible to Isaiah 50. There's a progression here of thought in this passage. It moves from we <laughs> uh, to me, and then to he, <laughs> and then to free. <laughs> we, then me, read it. We, Ten times he says, we or our or us. We are sinners in desperate need of, of saving. Christmas is the end of thinking that you are better than anyone else, folks. <laughs> we are all sinners, including this preacher. We are all, we are not. Christmas is telling you that you could never get to heaven on your own. That's what Christmas does. You can't get to heaven on your own. God has to come to you. <laughs> and that's Emmanuel. God, he came to us. And so it moves from we ten times, and then he gets to me. Until, until I move from we to me, I won't own my own offense against God, will I? And that's what the scripture says here. You see, it's one thing to say, you know, every, everybody's a sinner. <laughs> we can all say that, can't we? But it's another thing to say, I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. You move from we to me. Look at verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him. And then, it, then he, he, him, God, is, nine times in these verses. He, Jesus. Jesus took my place as my substitute and he made payment for my sins. He's carried all of my griefs. Oh, we've got folks grieving today. Jesus wants to, he, he's taken our griefs. 
He's carried all my griefs, every one of my transgressions, all of my iniquities. I deserve death, but he died in my place. He took, he, he, he did all this in my place instead of, instead of me, instead of you. He's your substitute. And so we have we and then me and then he and then free. <laughs> when I move from we to me to he, then I can be free. I receive peace, I receive forgiveness, I, I, I'm free in Christ. The only way to have freedom from the sin problem that we all have and the selfishness is to trust in the Savior who is our substitute. Because of grace, are y'all awake? Because of grace, Jesus was born, what? To die in my place. But back to Christmas. Without Jesus becoming a baby and then dying in our place, this should hit you. We would never be saved from our sins. I hope that hits you. That's Christmas, folks. That's the real Christmas. Not all this other uh, gushy stuff. That is the heart of Christmas. Baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. Amen. Baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. And uh, Jesus was born to die so that you could be what? Born again. <laughs> Amen. And it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've done. What matters is what Jesus has done. That's what I like to say to people, you know, Christianity is not a do religion. You know, you got to, all these things you got to do. Yeah, we, we, we try to, we, we have ideals, but Christi Christianity is a done religion, brother. It's, it, Jesus has done it. What did he say? What was his, what did he say on the cross? Finished. <laughs> finished. In the Greek, it's just one word. It's not, it is finished. He, he just said that word, to tell us Finished. It's done. Your salvation has been provided. And while, you know, we move from Christmas to Good Friday, uh, we shouldn't skip the Lord's life. It's true that he was born to die, but, but uh, he was also born to live. So what? That he could fulfill the righteous requirements of the law. We see it mentioned here three times in, this, in the, Isaiah 53. It talks about the law. Why, why is that important? Because it shows that Jesus' obedience from the very beginning to his Father's command fulfilled the law. You see, there's only two ways to fulfill God's law. Obedience or payment. Obedience or payment. Folks, Jesus did both. Matthew 5, 17, Do not think that I'm come to destroy, Jesus said, destroy the law and the prophets. I didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Jesus lived a perfect life. You and I cannot do it, but he lived the perfect life for you and for me. And Romans 5, 19 tells us that it was by his obedience that many will be made righteous, it says there. You, so, so this is pretty deep, folks, when you really get to thinking about it. Jesus fulfilled God's law twice. He perfectly obeyed all of God's law, but he also paid the penalty for our sin. So he came down to earth. He lived the life that we could not live. He died a death that we should have died. And he was raised to new life so that we can live forever with him. Hallelujah. But let's in closing, let's consider some of the other connections between Christmas and, as Paul Harvey used to say, <laughs> the rest of the story. <laughs> the rest of the story. You remember the angels? Uh, the angels appeared to the shepherds. And what, why did they? To announce the birth of Jesus. Luke, Luke chapter 2, verse 11. It says, what did they say? For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. You see, the angels appeared uh, also uh, later on in the garden. You remember that? In Luke 24? Remember that angel? 
And what did he declare? <laughs> He's not here. He is risen. He defeated death. Jesus defeated death, folks. Hallelujah. And you know, not for sure, but it's likely that Jesus wasn't born in a stable. He was born in a, in a cave that was meant for animals. And when he died, what was happened? Where did they put his body? They put it in a, in a tomb cut out of a stone. Luke uh, 2353 says that. Interesting, isn't it? Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen, that's all about Jesus' body, and he laid it in a tomb that was hewn out of a rock where no one had ever laid before. And then the baby Jesus, it says, what was he wrapped in? Swaddling clothes. He was wrapped in these cloths. He was wrapped in, in a linen shroud. When he died, Luke 2.12 says, and this is a sign to you, you'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. But when you get to the end of the Gospels and uh, look at Mark's version in Mark 15.46, it said what? Then Joseph of Arimathea brought fine linen and he took, it down, took him down and wrapped him in linen and laid him in a tomb. Interesting. What else do we think about Christmas? Well, one of the gifts that the wise men brought was, uh, what were they? It was gold, frankincense, and what was the last one? Myrrh. These were the three gifts that the Magi brought to Jesus. Myrrh. Matthew 2, 11. It was a spice that was used by Nicodemus to prepare the body of Jesus for burial. John 19, 39 says that. And Nicodemus, who at first came to Jesus by night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh. Myrrh and aloes, about 100 pounds. 100 pounds. They mixed with those linen as they mummified, in a sense, Jesus and put him in the tomb. Well, what does all that say? Well, it just says this, folks. God is working out his plan just like he did right here and now like he did 700 years before, prophesied, and then when Jesus came, all of that was fulfilled. And God is working out his plan right here and right now for you and for me. Why? Because of grace. Because of grace, Jesus what? Was born to die in my place. Baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. Never forget that. Baby Jesus is the same as cross Jesus. And I would say today, if you've never repented of your sins and put your faith and trust in the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, I would urge you to do that today. And if you have done that, may you gain a fresh sense of this good news, we call that the gospel, that we need to get out to the world. Our missionaries are out there doing it, but we need to get this message out, folks. I mean, people are hurting. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We all thought it wouldn't last this long, and hopefully, praise God, with the vaccines that are coming on, it is going to go away, but not really go away, but anyway, we're, we're going to be able to move on. But I want to tell you, folks are hurting, and per people need to hear good news. Well, folks, this is the greatest news of all. Let's go out and share it, and we're going to close our service by singing probably the most famous of all um, the Christmas carols are, are, are hymns, and I started to tell the story of it, but we don't have time, but look it up, Silent Night. It's a beautiful song. <laughs>